All right, let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Ro Wei, and today we are announcing the results on the first activity net entities object localization challenge hosted by me, Marcus, Yanis, and Jason. The challenge is sponsored by University of Michigan Robotics and PNG. So here's the outline of my talk. First, I want to briefly go through um, the challenge overview and then uh, introduce the evaluation metrics, including the winning criteria. And after that, I want to give you a brief overview on the data set and the baseline methods, GVD. And finally, the most exciting part, I want, we want to announce the challenge results and have the winning talk. So the challenge has two subtasks. Subtask one aims to locate objects determined by a caption in the video. So the input will be a video and associated caption. And in this caption, uh, we have a we have predefined a set of objects. So in our case, we have 432 target objects to localize. And the example output of the system should look like this, and which has bounding box drawn over the video and locate each of the target objects. So for subtask two, there's actual requirement, which is description generation. So the input now is only the video, no caption. And uh, we want the model to output, uh, first output a, a caption to describe the video, and at the same time, locate target objects in the video as bounding boxes. So for the evaluation metrics, on subtask one, we adopted a localization accuracy at 50% IOU. And I want to show you an example. Um, so given, uh, given the same input from the previous slides. So uh, on the left-hand side is the prediction and on the right-hand side is the reference. So say we have a prediction like this and the corresponding uh, reference is like this. And let's start from the red box. So the red box corresponds to the first word, man, uh, in the caption. So let's com uh, if we compare the, the prediction and the reference, and the red box has over 50% LU with the reference red box. So that's a correct prediction. And moving on to the second box, the green box, which corresponds to TV, and it overlap uh, over 50% IOU with the ground truth uh, TV box. So that's a, also a correct prediction. And for the third um, bunny box, the blue one, actually all, uh, the prediction locates a wrong couch and the overlapping between the prediction and the reference is lower than 50%. So that's an incorrect box. And finally, for the table, um, is a correct, correct prediction. So in this case, the localization accuracy is 3 divided by 4, which equals to 75%. And for subtask 2, uh, we use a metric called f one or. So in this case, we need to first generate a caption. And in the caption, only the word objects that are pr correctly predicted uh, will move on to the grounding uh, object localization evaluation. So again, um, the prediction and the reference. So say in prediction, we the model output a man is watching TV on a bat. And, and the corresponding boxes look like this. In the reference, the, again, we have a man is watching TV on a couch next to a table. And the bounding boxes. So the red bounding box overlap, uh, the prediction overlap with the reference, so that's a correct one. And for the green bounding box uh, on TV, the bounding box is not high, high, tight enough, so that's an incorrect prediction. And for the third one, uh, our model output bad in the caption, which is uh, which does not exist in the reference and is a hallucinated object. So we do not move on to the object um, evaluation. That's an incorrect prediction. Then we can get uh, the metrics. So we can have the, we can get the precision recall and the F1 score or, uh, which in this case is 0.29. And for the data set, we use uh, activity net entities, which is proposed by us um, at CVPR 2019. And it augments uh, the 52,000 captions from the activity net captions data set, uh, which actually is covered uh, in the previous session of this workshop. And we augment that data set with 158,000 bounding box annotations. 
And we locate 432 high frequent objects in the data sets. So, uh, not, so one quick example is here. So uh, given a um, sample frame from the video uh, and the corresponding caption like this, we recognize all the, the objects and noun phrases and then locate them uh, in the image, in the video. And so we public and uh, we provide public and both the noun phrase annotations and the object locates uh, annotations. So you can download the data with this link or scan the QR code with your phone to download the data. And compared to existing data set with both descriptions and bounding boxes, our activity net entities has more um, bounding boxes and have a variety of object categories. So here's a, one example from our data set. And so we identify all the noun phrases in the, um, in the caption, uh, also the objects, and then locate them in the, in the sample video frame. So we want to point out that here, uh, our goal is not object detection. So we don't want to uh, exhaustively annotate every single object in the video. And that would be really time consuming and expensive, especially for a data set at our scale. So our goal is more uh, connecting the two modalities, the visual modality and text modality. So we want to um, sparsely link the noun phrases, the object uh, to image region, to video regions, like what we have here. So we only sparsely sample one frame from the video that we can clearly see all those uh, objects. But you may ask, what if we cannot fit everything in one frame, right? So in that case, uh, we allow uh, the annotators to annotate in multiple frames. So in this case, the ball is invisible in the first frame, so it's annotated in the second frame. Okay, so we propose a, a baseline method uh, in our uh, CVPR 2019 work. And in that work, uh, grounding happens simultaneously with caption generation. So we adopt three proxy tasks to leverage the bounding box annotations which I will cover in details in the next slides. And we call our model Grounded Video Description, or GVD. So take a subtask two, for example. So uh, given a few sampled frames from the video, we first run the off shop detector to generate object proposals and get the corresponding uh, region features. And we also, we're also interested in the uh, objects in the region in the bounding box and also like the, the location of the bounding box in the, in the video. So we, all, we use, propose to use a grounding module to further encode the class information and the location information of the bounding box and such that we can get a refined feature. So once we have the refined feature, we pass it to uh, the tension module, uh, module B and the language decoder module C. So what, what happens here is uh, the uh, region attention module um, applies a, a receive a signal from the language decoder, usually the star signal, and, uh, and then the module B use it as a query and to apply attention on the refined feature to get attention weights, and then perform a weighted sum between the attention weights and the refined feature and provide that as evidence to the language decoder. And finally, language decoder output words. So the, this part, uh, module B and C are relatively standard. And what makes us unique is that uh, while performing the tension, we provide a supervision uh, for that module. So we, we guide the model where to attend to. So in this case, we want the model to output man so that we, so we, we, we tell the model to attend to this man, uh, region about man in the image. And so the, the ground, the reference will be a binary vector and we apply cross entropy loss between uh, the prediction attention weights and the ground truth attention weights. Besides, we, we want to uh, look, uh, verify that the words we generated are actually in the image. So we don't want to have any hallucinating objects. And so again, we use the, the grounding module to locate uh, a man back into the image. So here uh, we compute the similarity score between the embedded, word embedding man and the refined features. And uh, so that we can get, uh, we can localize where, where, where is this, where, where this, this object. 
and uh, we apply the same supervision to these the weights. And we repeat, repeat the process until the end of the description. And the loss function consists of four parts. The first one is the standard language reconstruction loss. And the second one is on the uh, attention weights. And similarly, we'll have that for the grounding weights. And um, the last one is um, a classification loss on the regions. So this part is um, the essential module for our subtask two. And we're, so in this here, we got um, the caption, the description of the video, and at the same time, um, the, the grounded regions in the, in the video. And for subtask two, because we have the reference caption, so uh, we can just fit it into the model during inference. So we do not have to generate caption uh, by our model. And so here comes the challenge results. So uh, I want to first share, share with you some uh, challenge stats. So on each task, we have uh, three teams participated. And the winning criteria for subtask one is the top one results on localization accuracy. And uh, for task, subtask two is the top one results on F1 or per sentence. So it's F1 score average um, across all the sentences. And so for subtask one, the winning prize is uh, $1,500. And uh, for subtask two, we, we raised the price a little bit because um, the task is more, itself is more complicated. So the price is $2,000. And they are sponsored by University of Michigan Robotics and the PNG. So the prices are awarded when uh, the proposal methods are at least 5% relatively better than the baseline method GBD. Okay, so here are the winners. And let's first take a look at subtask two. So unfortunately, there's no single submission that can outperform our baseline methods. So we are currently withholding the price and we are planning for a second challenge uh, next year. So the prize is still waiting for you to claim. That's a good news. And for subtask one, our winner is, uh, is Zhong En, Eugene, and Byung He from Saruman AI. And congratulations to the team. And know that the evaluation server will remain open after the challenge for people to submit their results but not part of the challenge, of course. And so um, it, the, here's a leaderboard for subtask one, and um, um, the, the team from the Roman AI um, have a pretty impressive, um, get impressive results, and uh, it outperformed the baseline by a large margin. And okay, let's welcome uh, Beyond He from the Roman AI to give us their winning talk. Thank you all so much. Hello. I will present a Team Suramind solution for the ActivityNet Entities Object Localization Challenge 2020. This is a joint work of Zhao and Kim, Yu Chung Ha, and Byung Hee Kim. ActivityNet Entities Object Localization Challenge aims to generate faithful and explainable video description. In subtask 1, from a given ground truth description for a video, noun phrases or words are identified, then localized in visual scenes sampled from the video. Here, the GT description, a man in a striped shirt is playing the piano on the street while people watch him, is depicted for a given video clip. Our task is to ground each colored phrase to the visual scene in the form of a spatial bounding box. For evaluation, the localization accuracy is used. If the intersection over union between the predicted bounding box and the human annotated bounding box is over 0.5, the prediction is regarded as correct. For the dataset, we use activity net entities, which covers 158k bounding box annotations for 432 object classes over 15k videos. As a baseline model, we exploit the grounded video description GVD model presented in CVPR 2019 by Joe et al. 
It has two objectives, generating the video description as shown in C language generation module, and grounding the description to the visual scene as shown in A grounding and B region attention module. GVD formulates the problem as a joint optimization over language generation and grounding. Based on the three modules, the overall loss function for training is set as follows. Here, L cent is the cross entropy loss of each token for language generation. L attention and L grounding is the attention and grounding loss, respectively. These losses drive visually groundable words to attend on the correct region. L class is the cross entropy loss for the region label classification. Our approach to this task is to tune the baseline model with hyperparameter optimization methods, mainly focusing on the grounding task of subtask 1. As explained in the previous slides, the GVD model has two objectives and the overall loss function consists of four terms. So, we applied the hyperopt library to tune the coefficients of the objective function. In addition, we employed diverse optimizers such as Stochastic Gradient Descent, RMS Prop, and Atom. With the hyperparameter optimization, we obtained four sub-optimal models, A to D, with increased performances of about 3%, from 43% to 46%, compared to the baseline model. Then, we exploited hard voting ensemble to make a more accurate and robust object localization. As shown in the figure, for an identified word, the four sub-optimal models might localize the word to different bounding boxes. The majority voting is then applied for each X and Y coordinate to decide the coordinates of the predicted bounding box. Through this ensemble technique, we get the final model E which shows slightly better performance in the object localization. In conclusion, with hyperparameter optimization and ensemble techniques, we improved the localization accuracy around 10.67% from 43.1 to 47.7 over the baseline. We are pleased that our team is announced as the winner of Activity Net Entities Object Localization Challenge, Subtask 1. One notable point is that although the localization accuracy was improved, F1 all and F1 lock measures for subtask 2 were observed to decrease. So, as future works, we will examine and analyze the aspects of the model, and develop evenly enhanced model for language generation and grounding. Thank you for listening.